the American Civil War uncovered in less than 15 minutes. Discover a hidden facet of the American Civil War in today's video, where we uncover astonishing, lesser-known facts and stories in less than 15 minutes. We're set to challenge and expand your understanding of this crucial period in American history. Stay with us until the end for revelations that promise to transform your perspective on the Civil War, offering insights that go beyond the conventional narrative. From 1803 to 1854, the U.S. wasn't just growing up, it was on a real estate shopping spree, grabbing land through deals, negotiations, and, yeah, even conquests. But here's where it gets even spicier. As America's map expanded, everyone started asking if these new spots should be free or slave states. This wasn't just about geography. The whole slavery debate was already shaking things up, creating a divide in public opinion. And when an abolitionist leader took charge, it wasn't just a disagreement anymore. It was the spark of a full-blown war. So let's dive into how America's growth stirred the national debate and set the stage for a conflict that split the nation right down the middle in the mid-19th century. The United States was not as we know it today, but as a nation rapidly expanding westward, tripling its territory in just half a century. This colossal growth came from acquiring lands from nations like France, Spain, the UK, and Mexico. But with great expansion came a significant dilemma. How to decide whether these new states would permit slavery or stand against it? In this era, the northern states, bustling with industry and home to over 23 million people, were pushing for free states. Contrast that with the southern states, where the economy was heavily reliant on agriculture and slavery, where a population of around 9 million, including 3.5 million enslaved individuals. The tension was palpable as both sides grappled with the moral and economic implications of slavery. As the debate intensified, both the North and South turned to the nation's founding documents for justification. The South argued the property rights and state sovereignty supported their stance on slavery. Meanwhile, the North highlighted the principles of equality and unity, suggesting a more centralized vision of governance. Compromises like the one in 1850 tried to quell the tensions. It allowed California to join as a free state and left other territories to decide their fate, sparking even more controversy. And then there was the Fugitive Slave Law, demanding that even states opposed to slavery return escaped enslaved people, which only added fuel to the fire. The atmosphere was so charged that politicians in Congress resorted to carrying weapons and physical altercations were not uncommon. This was a nation on the brink, divided not just by geography but by fundamental beliefs about freedom and rights. The rise of the Republican Party in 1854, staunchly anti-slavery, signaled a significant shift in the political landscape. And then came the 1860 election of Abraham Lincoln, the first Republican president, which became the last straw for the southern states. Even before Lincoln could take office, seven states had seceded, forming the Confederacy under Jefferson Davis. Moving on to a critical movement that significantly heightened the tensions between the North and South, edging them closer to the Civil War, this narrative centers on Dred Scott, a man enslaved from birth who found himself at the heart of a legal battle that would echo through history. Imagine Scott's life. He had the chance to live in free territories, yet never attempted to escape. Instead, he chose a different path, one filled with legal challenges as he sought to claim his freedom through the courts. This wasn't just any case, it was one that stuck at the heart of America's most contentious issue, slavery. When Scott was denied his freedom by the Supreme Court, which ruled that no person of African descent could claim U.S. citizenship, the nation was forced to confront its divided soul. And then Abraham Lincoln's election, which caused an alarm in the South that spurred the secession of South Carolina, setting off a chain reaction. Stay tuned as we delve into the complexities of this critical period in American history, uncovering the nuanced stories that shaped the nation's destiny.
Let's get into the actual Civil War with a focus that goes beyond the standard narratives. Imagine the scene in April 1861. South Carolina, feeling cornered, lashes out at Fort Sumter, igniting a conflict that would engulf the nation. The federal government, in response, calls for troops only to see four states decline, opting instead to join the Confederacy. Amidst this, states like Maryland and Kentucky find themselves in a precarious position, torn between union and secession. As the South mobilizes its forces, an interesting contrast emerges. The Union's leadership appears outdated compared to the South's, which boasts strategic minds like Robert E. Lee. The Lore's strategy? A blockade, aiming to strangle the Confederacy's resources. Consider the chaos of the First Battle of Bull Run, where inexperienced soldiers clashed and lines between friend and foe blurred onto similar battle flags. Civilians watched, not fully grasping the gravity of the conflict unfolding before their eyes. The narrative shifts when we introduce Ulysses S. Grant, a name that would become synonymous with Union victories. His successes in the West began to dip the scales, and then there's the twist of fate at Antietam, where lost Confederate plans fall into Union hands, altering the course of the war. The Battle of Antietam stands as a somber milestone, marking the single bloodiest day in U.S. military history. Its outcome halts the Confederate advance in the North, setting a new trajectory for the conflict. Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation then redefines the war's purposes, transforming it from a struggle for union to a crusade for human freedom, complicating any foreign intervention on behalf of the Confederacy. Fast forward to Gettysburg in 1863, a defining moment when the scale of human loss underscores the war's brutality and its significance. The Union's victory there, coupled with the success at Vicksburg, signifies a turning point. And then there's Lincoln at Gettysburg, distilling the essence of the nation's struggle into a brief yet profound address, overshadowing the longer speech that preceded it. As the conflict draws towards its conclusion, we witness Sherman's march, Lincoln's overwhelming re-election, and the strategic endgame of 1864, the fall of the Confederacy's capital, and Lee's subsequent surrender at Appomattox. Not just the end of a war, they mark a pivotal moment in American history. So as we reflect on these events, consider their weight and their implications. How did they reshape the nation, and what lessons do they hold for us today? Join us as we explore the depths of the Civil War's impact on the fabric of America. Okay, now let's explore the 13th Amendment, a pivotal piece of legislation that ended slavery and involuntary servitude. It's a stark moment in history. The Senate passed it on April the 8th, 1864, and the House followed on January the 31st, 1865. Tragically, President Lincoln, the architect of this landmark amendment, never witnessed its full impact. Just days after the House's approval, Lincoln was assassinated by John Wilkes Booth at Ford Theater, a loss that shook a nation in its core. The amendment's ratification by December 6, 1865 marked a new chapter, but it was just the beginning of a long and tumultuous journey. With Confederate President Jefferson Davis captured and the South under military occupation, the path to rebuilding and reconciliation was fraught with challenges. Consider this, over 750,000 lives were lost in the Civil War, making it the deadliest conflict in American history. The aftermath brought some progress. African Americans gained citizenship and voting rights, and families torn apart by slavery were reunited. Yet the struggle for equality persisted, a battle that continues to this day. This legacy begs a critical question. How do we reconcile with our past to build a more unified future? Lincoln, remembered as a president who championed unity and justice, offers a beacon of what is possible when we commit to progress. Thanks for joining us on this journey through the American Civil War, uncovering the stories and events that shaped a nation. Remember, history isn't just about the past, it's a lens through which we view the present and envision the future. Stay curious, keep exploring, and we'll see you in the next deep dive into history's most defining moments.